This is Introduction to Accreditation Part 2. This is about ABET requirements and the accreditation process. The accreditation process is treated very briefly in this presentation. Here you see an outline of the ABET self-study template. We are provided with a template that we can use to fill out uh, to create our self-study. The items in blue are what are addressed mostly in this particular presentation. And historically in the College of Engineering, items that are boilerplate, that is, uh, they are common to all the programs, have typically been written by uh, the Dean's Office, such as background information, uh, general criteria. Criterion one about students is pretty common. Um, also facilities, and institutional support are common. And so um, the primary ones that will be addressed here are the ones in blue. They're the ones that have to do with assessment. ABET has provided some definitions and we need to look at these because sometimes their definitions aren't necessarily the same as the definitions used in other educational institutions or accrediting agencies. The first one we see is program educational objectives. These are broad statements of what we expect our graduates to be doing a few years after graduation. And we're using three to five years after graduation as kind of a guideline that's been provided to us. Then student outcomes are the traditional outcomes that are discussed with outcomes assessment. And so uh, we have a list of some provided by ABET and some developed by ourselves. And these are knowledge, skills, abilities that uh, our students uh, should be um, doing upon graduation. Assessment is the process of identifying, collecting, and preparing data to uh, see how well we're doing with student outcomes. And they mention direct, indirect, quantitative, and qualitative measures. And so that's partially referring to objective and subjective assessment and the use of data versus the use of qualitative type of information. Also, sampling is acceptable. And I'm glad they mentioned that because uh, sometimes we in engineering, we want to gather 100% of the results of everything uh, when we're doing assessment and yet you don't need 100%. You don't need to assess all your classes or all your students or all your um, senior projects. And finally, evaluation in their definition is the process of interpreting the data and examining uh, the extent to which outcomes are being attained. And keep in mind uh, this definition of evaluation is different uh, in, in some educational institutions. Criterion 2 has to do with program educational objectives, which I will call PEOs most of the time. Uh, the PEOs are what do we expect our graduates to be doing three to five years after graduation. So this includes developing our own mission statement and showing how it aligns with the mission statement of the university. Developing our PEOs and showing how they align with the mission of the university. And then also show how we included our constituents in the development of the PEOs and also in periodic review of the PEOs just in case things have changed over time. And so we have to show our processes and evidence that we've uh, done all this. The PEOs for our program are discussed in detail in part three. Criterion three are the current student outcomes and ABET has a specified uh, a number of them, A through K, and you can see it starts out with an ability to apply knowledge of math, science, and engineering. And then it goes through the ability to gather and analyze data, 
look at systems. D is function on a multidisciplinary team. E solve problems. F is professionalism and ethics. G is communication, which would be written, oral, and graphical communication, probably. Um, and then H and I are related to the uh, graduate's ability to look at the impact of what they do uh, in the broader sense with global, economic, environmental, uh, and social issues as well as contemporary issues. I is the recognition and need for uh, to engage in lifelong learning. And um, finally, K is the ability to use the technique, skills, and modern tools of engineering practice. The IME department has added two more, L and M, business skills and employability, which will be discussed more in part three. Uh, we've gone round and round on uh, how to define these and have settled on some things that are also discussed in um, part three. What needs to be mentioned at this point, however, is that ABET is currently uh, seriously considered re considering revising A through K. And what you see on the screen now is the proposal that's being considered. and uh, it has items 1 through 7, and what I've done in blue is mapped out how the, these seven items uh, coincide with the A through K criteria that we were using before, and most of these you can actually map in uh, one or two of the um, previous student outcomes to create 1 through 7 the uh, couple of notes there for numbers six and seven uh, with regarding to maybe some new stuff and old stuff that's been dropped. Uh, for example, it looks like they've added research uh, to uh, the requirements and dropped um, and they've added I think project management specifically but I think they've dropped um, or minimized the lifelong learning uh, aspect that's just my rough interpretation. Let me um, add that the minute that they approve these, uh, they then become the criteria by which we need to write our self-study. And it looks to me like the timing is that uh, effective probably next year, we will be told these are the criterion we have to use. Um, so we can get other people's opinions on that, but that's just a heads up. Criterion 4 is continuous improvement. And over the last four accreditations we've been, to, been through, um, the last three in this one, these requirements have gotten a little more detailed and they expect a little, more, a little bit more each time. Uh, this slide shows that we have to provide a table that shows our outcomes, uh, what um, assessment processes we're using uh, to assess each one, uh, the and then also a table to show what level of attainment is considered to be satisfactory so that we can look and see where we need to be applying continuous improvement. Then in criterion four we need to show for each outcome anything that we've done as far as continuous improvement the data we've collected, the results, what we tried, what the results were, and then if the results didn't work, what did we do uh, to try again? And so we had to use the um, pretty much the plan, do, check, act site cycle to show what we were doing uh, using a systems approach to try and improve our processes. We also have to have available all of our assessment instruments and data uh, at the time of the visit in case they want to look at anything themselves. Also, since we're expected to talk to stakeholders and to also discuss these things among ourselves, they expect to see minutes of faculty meetings and minutes of 
um, for example, industrial advisory council meetings um, or any other meetings uh, to prove that we have um, been doing evaluation. In addition to the general criteria for all engineering programs, each discipline has a set of program criteria developed by the professional society that is aligned with ABET for doing just this. And so here you see the program criteria for industrial engineering. And let me read this to you, although you can read it on the screen. It says the curriculum must prepare graduates to design, develop, implement, and improve integrated systems that include people, materials, information, equipment, and energy. The curriculum must include in-depth instruction to accomplish the integration of systems using appropriate analytical, computational, and experimental practices. Now that's quite a mouthful and it requires a lot of interpretation on our part, but we could be in trouble if we don't uh, make a deliberate attempt to follow this as closely as possible. Um, when I first read this, I thought that we could be in trouble if we don't really um, uh, find some way to map this directly back into our curriculum. Um, you can read the uh, faculty uh, evidence that's required, but this is pretty much the same as it's been all along, and I don't perceive us having too much trouble with it. Here we have the manufacturing engineering criteria which hasn't changed very much in the last since the last visit while the IE criteria did change some but let me read this uh, for the sake of completeness the program must prepare graduates to have proficiency in materials and manufacturing processes ability to design manufacturing processes that result in products that meet specific material and other requirements B, process assembly and product engineering, ability to design products and equipment, tooling, and environmental uh, environment necessary for manufacture. C, manufacturing competitiveness, ability to create competitive advantage through manufacturing planning strategy, quality, and control. D, manufacturing systems design, ability to analyze, synthesize, and control manufacturing operations using statistical methods and E, manufacturing uh, laboratory or facility experience, the ability to measure uh, manufacturing process variables and develop technical inferences about the process. Um, let me say that in a previous ABET visit, uh, the visitor went through every one of those words and uh, we needed to verify that every one of those um, items was being covered in the curriculum some way shape or form um, which we were able to do but uh, uh, this is a very serious business here this uh, the program criteria I've created one slide just to give a broad overview of the accreditation uh, visit process uh, first of all we spend about five years uh, to be honest, um, refining and continuously improving our program. And the reason I say five years is because it usually takes us about a year to get our results back in enough detail to know what to work on for the next cycle. So we spend about, even though we collect data, we spend about five years refining our process. That's uh, gathering data, assessing how we're doing, making changes, and then monitoring the results, etc., closing um, the circuit, so to speak, continuous loop feedback system. Then we spend a little more than a year prior to the visit uh, writing and revising our self study, putting in the evidence, uh, reviewing it, and uh, working with the college uh, assessment team to make sure we're all um, on track. Then several months before the visit, say around June prior uh, to the October visit, we send several copies of the written self-study uh, for each program to ABET, and then they put 
uh, they um, disseminate that to the team that's been formed for the study and the visitor for each program gets one of the copies that they then have the summer to read and analyze and what they're doing is they want to first of all make sure that we've uh, satisfied the ABET requirements with what we've written and then they identify areas where they have questions or where they want to see it with their own eyes um, and uh, then uh, they come in the fall for a visit it usually starts on a Sunday with tours of the facility and meetings with the department chairs and the rest of the day for the visitor to look at um, course notebooks other evidence um, etc and then Monday is usually devoted to interviews, uh, getting questions asked, um, uh, talking to people, and then Monday night and Tuesday morning they write up their reports and then submit those uh, to the team. They look at any physical evidence they want. They talk to anybody they want to. They look at course notebooks for courses they're concerned about. Um, it's pretty much just an audit. They look at a sample, random sample of student transcripts that they have selected and they audit those down to the unit. And uh, then they, like I said, on Monday night and Tuesday morning, they prepare their uh, initial response and then it's reviewed and um, then after it, it's been discussed and everything um, before they leave which is typically like on Wednesday morning then the program um, chair the program leader uh, reveals their initial responses to the department chair the dean the provost and the president in separate uh, presentations and then they take their results, which are only recommendations, submit them to the ABET board um, in uh, their final versions, by the way, um, which they have a couple of months to prepare. And then the ABET board has to vote on what kind of accreditation to give the institution. And then finally, this is delivered back to the institution itself. And this process has taken up to a year uh, for us. Uh, usually it doesn't take a year, but sometimes it has taken that long. And don't be surprised if the final report has some surprises in it, something different than what was said um, when the initial outcomes were proposed. And one of the reasons for that is sometimes uh, the ABET team will find something that they believe is a organization-wide um, deficiency and then they want to lay it at the feet of each department and so by the time they've put any of that in there it, it may look like a little bit of a surprise um, at the end so anyway this is just a very broad overview of the ABET process